If you watch the Vintage Geek channel, you know that we love Radio Shack, and we also love robots, and today we get to experiment with both. This is Roby Sr., and we're going to be talking about him right here on Vintage Geek. Just a reminder, if you like vintage computers and vintage tech and maybe even robots, be sure to like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot as we grow, and I encourage you to become a Vintage Geek member. You can do that on our website at VintageGeek.com. In the early 80s, robots were all the craze. It probably had a little something to do with a movie called Star Wars, but uh, R2-D2 was certainly at the forefront of people's minds. A lot of companies wanted to get in on the robot action, and one of those companies was the Tomy Company, which we've talked about here on Vintage Geek before, a Japanese toy company that was working on a product called the Omnibot. Now, the Omnibot was an early robot concept, and as I understand it, the Omnibot 2000, which was kind of the high-end model of that, was able to actually do some voice acting commands and may have even had some kind of a basic computer on board. But we're not talking about the Omnibot today, we're talking about the Omnibot's cousin. This is Roby Sr. Roby Sr. was another robot built by the Tomy Corporation, but it was actually sold by Radio Shack here in the United States. And it was part of a line of robots. This was the top-end model, the Roby Sr., which actually sold for about $179, which was pretty expensive back in those days in the mid-80s. But they also had some smaller versions as well, even down to one that I believe was a bank that would just accept quarters and it was just kind of a small device. It's really an interesting product line because we see some of the tie-ins with the early computers. Obviously we've talked a lot about Radio Shack computers, the color computer line, the Tandy line including the Tandy 1000, and certainly they were into the computer space. This particular robot does not have a computer on board per se, but it does follow a lot of the things going on with computers at the time, especially when it comes to programming and its movements. This particular robot Senior I actually found on a random trip to a thrift store and it was a really surprising find especially to find one in the box of course I had to pick it up it's really a cool looking robot device and uh, looks like it could go just about anywhere and give you that kind of space age feel in your home this particular robot has a number of different features that we're gonna go into here in a minute but one of the things that I really like about both the Omnibot series and the Roby series of robots is that it seems like they had the idea of service in mind and serving drinks at a cocktail party I don't know why that seemed to be the uh, the common thing at the time that people wanted to do with robots. Sure, kid. Have your agent call my agent. Really? It's a lot of fun, and I want to go into everything this robot is supposed to be able to do, and then we're going to take a look and see what things it's capable of now. It may not function completely, but uh, we want to see everything that Roby Sr. can accomplish here on Vintage Geek. So taking a look at our Roby Sr. robot here, it's a really interesting design, and I love the look of this thing basically from top to bottom. I'm going to start with the head of the robot. Now, I've looked at some of the pictures of the Omnibot units, and I think that they had a little bit more of a spherical head shape. This one's a little bit more egg-shaped. It's a little bit more oblong in the front. It's kind of a different design, but I like it. It has these eyes and a mouth, and according to the documentation, all of that is supposed to light up, which I think you can do with either a remote control or by programming it to do so. If we go to kind of the mid portion of the robot, you can see that there's a display in the center now the display is actually a digital clock, and that's powered by its own AA battery, which goes in the back compartment. Now this clock is actually pretty important to the whole robot in general, because it's used to do timed events. This is actually where I think Radio Shack and Tomy got very clever with how to make something work in a small form factor. Instead of putting a computer in this actual chassis, what they have is the ability for it to follow basic instructions. And when I say basic instructions, I mean turn left, turn right, move forward, move back. Those instructions can be encoded on a cassette tape using a similar method to what we've seen with some of the older computers we have here in the museum. Certainly the color computer would be a great example of that. These instructions are saved to a cassette tape, and then the robot can follow those instructions. But most importantly, the robot can follow those instructions on a schedule. You can program his onboard computer, and he'll act on cue all by himself. It's kind of an ingenious way of taking rudimentary technology and making it do what you want it to do, and basically having a programmable schedule, which was easy to put in a single IC on the robot, and then making it control a tape drive to 
read the instructions. I think that's pretty clever, and it's uh, it's one of my favorite things about the robot itself. Now, if we go down a little bit further onto the robot body, you'll see that the tape drive actually opens up out in the front. So this is where you would put the cassette in. This particular Roby Senior, as well as I believe all of them, came with a demonstration tape. Now we've had Justin working on the Roby here for the past couple of days, trying to get it ready for its big film debut. And in the process, we have not gotten the cassette recorder to function at full speed yet. It does play, but it is not playing at the proper speed. We're working on that. We probably won't be able to test those functions today, but just to cover it, again, this is where you would put the programming instructions. And if I'm not mistaken, you could actually have a mix of things too. You could actually have audio as well as the instructions themselves, because the other thing that Roby does have more towards the bottom of the base is a internal speaker. Now the internal speaker on Roby can actually play audio from the cassette. It can also relay a microphone that is built into the remote control. So in theory, if you were having Roby deliver a drink to someone in the other room, you could use the remote control to speak to that person through the robot, which is probably pretty weird, but I think it's cool. Roby is also capable of making some of its own unique sounds, and we're gonna get to that in just a few as well. The remote control has all of your basic functions on it. You can move Roby forward, back, turn him left, turn him right. There are also some utility buttons on the side of the remote control. One of these is gonna be for turning the lights on and off in Roby's head. You can also uh, pause the tape, and you can make it play sounds. So that's how you would have Roby make his kind of distinctive robot sounds. You can do that via a button on the remote control. And I assume that you could make that a step in a program as well. Then there's this red button on the side of the remote control. That's for actually doing the push to talk if you wanted to relay your voice through Roby to someone in the other room or whoever he happened to be around. Pretty basic, but you've got some good functionality built into the remote control. All of this is pretty clever, and especially for a small form factor at the time, there was a lot to be done in this small chassis, and uh, they were able to accomplish it. Conveniently, Roby Sr. also comes with this handy drink tray. So if you want to uh, carry multiple drinks around, you can certainly do so by just popping that right in. And now you can uh, carry your drinks around the party. The battery compartment is in the back. For the main power that powers the cassette unit as well as all of the motor controls is a six volt lead acid battery. And that's actually the same type of battery used in the Mac Portable, which was convenient in our case because we actually had a brand new battery. We were testing for that system that we were able to use in the Roby because the original battery was, as you might expect, very, very dead. We did run into a little bit of a problem with the leads on the battery. They're a little bit too short, so I can't put the cover back on the back of the Roby right now, but it is functional, so we can at least test it and kind of see what this robot can do. I did take a quick look through the manual for the Roby Senior, and it's uh, pretty well written and very concise overall. It talks a little bit about the cassette tape operation, and it does have the obligatory page that shows you if you have a cassette that has a little bit of tape coming out of it, that you can spool that tape with a pencil. It's really interesting that in the United States, the the number two pencil, the standard pencil size, doesn't really work for that on the cassette because it's just slightly too small for the pegs inside the uh, cassette. But because this was made in Japan, it was probably using pencils of a slightly different size. Other than that, in the manual, some really interesting tidbits. One thing is for sure that I didn't realize is that there are no motors for the arm controls. So all of the arm movement you're basically doing by hand and kind of setting those things in advance, including opening the claw on the one hand to hold things. And you can also conveniently turn the other one and there's a little hole in the top so that you can carry pencils around. You know, if you need to get those non-standard pencils to wind your cassette tape, you can just simply store them right in the robot's hands, which is uh, pretty convenient. I wanna see what this can do. We're gonna start out with some remote control operation. So let's put this guy in RC mode first. And then we're gonna put this in the on position. Made a cool little beeping sound when it turned on. Very low volume though. There might be something going on with the speaker. There is a volume control in the front, but it is all the way up. So I think maybe a wire's loose or something inside. We'll have to take a look at that. But I did hear the sounds. It sounded pretty cool so far. Now all we have to do is engage our remote control and we should be able to see if Roby can move. So let's see what he can do. Oh, well, I think the first thing I noticed is that the remote control may be backwards. I was just uh, hitting the forward command and he definitely seems to want to go in reverse. So let's see if the opposite is true. There we go. All right, so we can move forward and back. Let's see how he turns. Oh, that's a nice turn right there. Let's see if he can turn the other way. All right. All right, Roby, let's see if you can light up. Nice. 
<laughs> That's pretty cool. It looks like you can also engage the sounds that he can make. And again, the speaker's low, but hopefully we can at least capture it here. I can just barely hear it. It almost sounds like the speaker is kind of stuck under the plastic or something, but it's definitely there. The tape pause command is probably not gonna do anything because we're not playing a tape currently. There's also this push to talk function we talked about. And I did hear it beep, but I can't tell if I'm actually relaying the voice because the volume is just too low. One thing I found very funny in the manual for this is that the other application for the push to talk function was apparently you could put a cassette in the cassette player and sing along with it. So it was a very early karaoke machine as well as being your personal robot for serving drinks. It's the life of the party, really. So since we're really limited to just the remote control movements at the moment, I think maybe just for a proper test, let's see if Roby can carry a piece of software across the museum. So we don't exactly have any drinks for Roby to carry here in the Vintage Geek Museum, but we do have plenty of software. So I figured that we would have him carry a color computer title across to the Radio Shack sign as uh, his home base. And uh, let's see how Roby does. Come on, Roby, you can do it. Oh no. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. It's pretty good with the turning, not quite as good with the forward and back. <laughs> Come on, you gotta keep going. You can do this. Oh, a little bit this way. Keep going, you can do it. <laughs> there you go. Back up just a hair. You did it! Congratulations, Roby, you made your first delivery in the Vintage Geek Museum. So there you have it, the Roby Senior from Radio Shack. What a cool little robot. I'm actually really looking forward to being able to do more with it once we get the cassette player up and running. I've also read that there was a piece of software that someone wrote for the system that could actually create the commands using a Commodore 64, which is kind of weird since it's a Radio Shack product, but I'd love to be able to find that. If anyone does know about that software or knows where I can find a copy, please be sure to put that in the comments below. As always, if you like vintage technology, vintage computers, and even robots, be sure to like and subscribe. It's gonna help us a lot as we grow. And I want to encourage you to become a Vintage Geek member. We've got all sorts of extra content on the website, extra video content, little fun code snippets, and discounts on museum admission. All you have to do is go to VintageGeek.com. Until next time, I'm Aaron, this is Roby, and this is Vintage Geek.